show, uh, Coffee for Closers. Uh, we got a very special episode. I got my co-host, Mr. Rick Kallmeyer, here pleasure. with us. Uh, we are going to be diving deep with American Equity today, talking all about some of the updates. Rick, you and I, we were out in Las Vegas how many months ago? A month and a half. It was early, mid-August. Month and a half. Yeah, that yeah, it was hot. I remember yeah. it being really, really hot. But uh, yeah, we went out there, some tremendous stuff. And if you remember correctly, I was hunting down some of uh, the reps that had spoken at the event because of the incredible information they were spewing from yeah. the stage. I wanted to bring them on the stay or on the show mm-hmm. to talk a little bit about some of the updates because there's so much going on with American Equity over the last. Ooh, I don't know, two years or so, American Equity has maybe changed. We'll say it was changed. It would come down a tiny bit. They were dropping rates, just doing some uncharacteristic things. But they have had a major resurgence yeah. over the last, I don't know, how long? Half year? Year? Almost a year. Yeah, almost a year. Yeah. Last year really happened last year in the pandemic. They started to come and take the turn. Might be something to do with the CEO, new CEO that came in. Yeah. Uh, might have something to do with just the incredible reps that we're going to have on the show with us today. <laughs> uh, but we've got Mr. Aaron Barrage and Mr. Matt Johnson on the show today with yeah. us to talk cool. a little bit about some of the updates here with uh, American Equity. The American Equity 2.0 mission, mm-hmm. right? They heard they talked a little bit about this out in Vegas. They're going to talk a little bit about the Shield Suite and, uh, you know, some of the best fits for, of the different products for um uh, different clients out there, you know, maybe mm-hmm. some stories of, of accumulation and income and their thoughts on the industry at this point. But guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. We appreciate your time. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it, guys. So maybe, I don't know which one of you guys wants to take the helm on this, but uh, maybe gives us some background about this American 2.0 or American Equity 2.0 vision and, and where it all came from and the why behind it and so on. Sure. Matt, you want me to jump in or? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, you, you're the long tenured person. I've only been here for a, a handful of months. So I'll let you you give the, the background, where, we, where we're coming from, where we're going. Sure, I'll, I'll try and, and keep this at that 10,000 foot level, guys, so we, right. can, we can get into some of the really good stuff. But I, I do think this is a fun story uh, of what's kind of, of happened over this last, probably particularly 18 months or so. Um, as you put it out, it's kind of a resurgence, if you will, uh, because frankly, we, we had gotten to where we weren't where we wanted to be competitively or where we were used to being and where our, our folks in the field were used to seeing us competitively. And uh, we, we did get a new CEO who, who took the helm around, I think it was March 1st of 2020. Uh, his name's Anant Bala. And uh, of course, we all know what happened right about that time. So you know, poor guy takes over and then the, the world goes into a, a shutdown mode, but yeah. not, a great, uh, fortunately, not a great first yeah. month of work. No, no. no that's a tough, <laughs> tough starting off point for sure. Tough, t- tough start. But, you know, I, I will share with you this. He came in very clearly with a, a plan in place for us. Um, and fortunately he did so. So he, despite all that craziness, he hit the ground running and you know, what, what he's really been able to do, uh, I think for us and the leaders he's brought in to kind of supplement the great leadership team we had is really begin to level the playing field with some of this private equity we've seen enter our, yeah. our base over the last, you know, five, six, seven years. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've established some great strategic partnerships. So I'm sure you guys and some of the folks that are listening have seen you know, some of some of the, uh, you know, announcements that have come out in the last 18 months. And we've been, you know, I think slowly closing on some of these deals. So they've heard of Brookfield and Varde and Agam and Adam Street. Um, and in a nutshell, what we've really been able to do, there's a few things that have gone on. Uh, and Matt, keep me honest, feel free to jump in at any point. But, you know, we've established some reinsurance agreements, which for us frees up some capital, makes us capital light, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the back end so we can put that money back to work in product, you know, caps, rates, those things to make sure we're being competitive. Um, but additionally, we're, we're getting some access to some new investment asset classes, um, which we haven't traditionally had access to, which again, begins to level that playing field, um, give us a little more yield on, uh, on our 
portfolio, which is is obviously going to go back to work so that we can be the company we we want to be and need to be sure. for our partners in the field and their clients. Right. Right. Makes sense. Makes sense. Matt, anything so else? It's exciting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot of good stuff. And I think honestly, guys, we're just getting started. Um, we're, um, you know, we're drinking the Kool-Aid, right? Matt and I are <laughs> drinking the Kool-Aid. So <laughs> our job is to help you guys start drinking the Kool-Aid too. So, well, I'll tell you, I I've seen a lot of folks out there, um, in the field that were maybe drifting, to other waters during that down period for American equity coming back and starting to, I mean, I know our service department, Rick could speak maybe largely to that, uh, have been running a lot more quotes with American equity involved in it, but also just the, the, with the launch of the estate shield and the shield suite products Mm -hmm. that we'll talk about here in a second. I mean, people are, American equity has become top of mind again for them. And we couldn't be more happy to hear that because yeah. it's an American-owned company. We do a lot of work in the federal space here at Megastar, but just in the field, I think a lot of people uh, just loved that American equity feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 here's one thing that never stopped with American equity. Over that entire period, never once did the customer service aspect of, customer, of American equity change. Mm-hmm. And for a producer- a producer, right. It, it is a huge benefit because you knew at least that side of the coin with American equity. I mean, they had great products. Mm-hmm. They've had great products. They've, they've been, you know, some of, one of the most consistent from a rate perspective in the industry for a long time, but they never faltered. And you could always trust that your, your, your clients were taken care of on the back end that you could always get a straight answer on a product. There was less of, it felt like there was less of a revolving door at the front door, as far as the people working Mm -hmm. uh, at the American equity office. And we, you know, I think producers, when they strayed away because the products were suffering a tiny bit of American equity, they lost that comfort working with other carriers out there. Not every other carrier is bad at customer service, but American equity sets the standard in yeah, my opinion. Or exceptional at customer service. Exceptional. Yeah. 11 out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a great topic. Um, because you know, I echo everything Aaron said, you know, I, this is my fourth insurance company I've worked for. It's, it's the smallest. Um, I've worked for the largest paternal benefit society in the, in the country. I've worked for a couple of the largest global insurance companies. Um, in fact, on any given day, one of them is probably one of the global largest global insurance companies in the world. So it's really, it's really been, a um, exciting to come down here to a company and, and we used to do business. I used to run a product shop for a broker dealer okay. and American equity is one of our clients, right? They distributed products for us. So I got to know some of the guys through that. And, uh, when DOL was coming down the pipe first time, we had to build a, uh, best interest screening tool for our product selection criteria for the platform. So it was fixed index annuities. It was registered index. It was FIA, everything. We had to build a screen of like, why do we select the carriers? Cause we want a best in class carriers on our shelf. And if the DOL ever came in and said, okay, how did you end up with these contracts, uh, for your advisors to, to sell? Uh, we had to have some rational reason to explain to a regulator how we came up with them. And one of the criteria, you know, uh, in addition to competitiveness of features, you know, sales support, marketing materials, but we also added in customer service. Uh, we added it in specifically for American equity at the time. So that was my experience before coming down here Really, uh, was the customer service. And I, I would say, um, I didn't realize how good it was until I got here uh, at, at a previous carrier. I remember them excel, uh, celebrating this was a big deal like it went out throughout the, the company like hey we just got our average hold time down to 11 minutes <laughs> Yay! Uh, and i'm not kidding you this was i i would I, if i had a question on an enforced contract uh i had no one else to go to other than my customer service center and there were so many times i'd call and it'd be like your average hold time is 23 minutes yeah. um you know so that was that was common and that's a choice by a carrier, right? I mean, the, the, the company said, we want to get our hold time down to 11 minutes. So we're going to invest in this number of people, right? To get us down to 11. We're not going to invest any more than that. Right. Because we're going to put the rest of that into either product or comp or profitability. Right. So these are decisions that carriers make. And that's why I think it's, a, it's important because what I'm seeing being four months in here is a continued focus on an, an investment in our back office and service operations. So I like to say, you know, it's a lot easier for me to copy some of the carrier's product features, but it's a lot harder for them to copy our service model 
because it's culture, it's years of training, it's hiring the right people, yeah. right? It, it takes a lot to actually offer good customer service. So I'll make I'll make one thing, I'll make one point about that. I'll go back to the Department of Labor. Uh, you know, one of the questions that we hear from everybody is, oh, man, I'd love to recommend American Equity, uh, you know, like uh, for, for income, but, you know, Carrier A is here and you guys are right here. How can I justify, you know, DOL and best interest? Uh, how can I justify writing you instead of this carrier? And like I said earlier, customer service is a valuable product and it's something you can absolutely include uh, in your overall thought process. In okay. fact, it doesn't hurt to write down, you know, put, put, a, put a note in the file. What are the criteria you use to select um, product? And the level of how your clients, how you are taken care of is a valuable feature that you can include in that criteria. Absolutely for de- yeah. be- best interest. We, you can include that. We have a hundred percent. And you think about why, yeah. what percentage of, you know, what's the average agent uh, age in the business, right? I'm going to guess upper fifties. Mm. At least. Somewhere like that. Yeah. And we're writing 10 year contracts, right? Um, 10 year surrender charge is the number one seller. Um, and a lot of these elongated uh, guarantees. These are contracts with contractual features that are complicated. That's why we all have jobs because we help people understand how these things work. <laughs> um, a lot of these people end up being orphan clients. The agents retire. Uh, you know, we, you know, COVID uh, took out a certain number of, of agents, unfortunately. And and hopefully anybody listening here uh, isn't a, isn't hasn't been affected by that and is safe and everything. But it, it is a fact of life. And we get calls in from these clients who are saying, hey, you know. My agent's uh, no longer in the business. So, you know, my husband's deceased. You guys are the only ones left to take care of me. So that's really important uh, to think through, not just what's the highest income level or the highest cap and par rate on the grid, but also five, six, seven, eight years from now, yeah. uh, you know, if my client or I need to call in and, and get some help on this complicated yeah. product, who's going to take care of me? And we're making those investments today. Yeah, no doubt. There's 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 no doubt that it is a justifiable reason to overcome a certain level of gap. It's just wherever that line is yeah. in in how you know how what what's what's the size of the gap yeah. between this pro- yep. product exactly. and product B. Yep. Yeah. But to be honest, man, it's like like you said, nail on the head, Matt. And that's why I was eager to get you on the show as well was because there's a lot of things that you say that are that that echo a lot of the things that we say on the show all mm-hmm. the time. And when it comes down to those fiduciary rules, of course. A ten-year product, it, it would if, if you have a company that has bad customer service, yeah. that's going to affect your ability as the agent to take care of this client over that that contract mm-hmm. period, right? And mm-hmm. so, it, 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 spot on, yeah. nail on the head, man. But again, it comes back down to there is a gap there, and if that gap is outweighed the the value of customer service, then you know this is a moot point altogether, mm-hmm. right? But that's where the Shield Suite comes in. The Shield Suite has brought you guys well within that gap, if not at the top of it. And and in a lot of situations, it is the top product out there. So uh, maybe explain to us a little bit about the thoughts behind the Shield Suite. I don't know who wants to take that one, but uh, the Shield Suite is something that we've been been talking a lot about here at the Megastar. Doing a lot of business with. Yeah. Yeah, I can kick it off and then turn it over to Aaron. He's the he's the the boots on the street, right? Sitting down daily with uh, with uh, your advisors and yep. with marketers and training on the product. I can talk more high level about kind of the the overarching story, and it's the shield suite of products built on a foundation of world class customer service and financial professional engagement. So we talked about the importance of world class customer service, right? That's a feature of the product. But we'll also just go back. You already mentioned it being at the the meeting, and just maybe give me give me your guys' review of the meeting. You guys do a lot of different meetings and events. What did you think of the quality of the meeting? Uh, the the Las Vegas American Equity Producer Summit. Las Vegas uh, is always a great event from American Equity. The Producer Summit it is, um, but I will say that that there was a, a something palpable in in the meeting this year with a lot of folks. Um, you know, telling their stories, overcoming mm-hmm. the last year or so of of ups and downs, virtual, non-virtual models, you know, what shook them up. Uh, so I was very impressed with everything. But the Shield Suite was, um, I mean, with the Estate Shield, I think the Estate Shield was just coming out. Yeah, at that it was point, just right? launching. It was yeah. just launching at, at that meeting or maybe weeks prior. I don't know exactly the timeline on it. But that's yeah. when we were, we were just I mean, we were floored by the whole meeting. Now we left uh, Tuesday or something yeah. like that, so we missed the last day of it. I will say that uh, because we had we had some other engagements going. Mm. But uh, up to that point, it was it was 
yeah. one of the best that I'd been to for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, so I've been, um, you know, like I said, I was with a captive, I was an agent or an advisor for them and I worked out of a regional financial office. So I was, I had a support team. We had weekly training meetings. We went to, yeah. uh, they'd bring in all the top producers to give us rookies, um, uh, you know, coaching and ideas and we could bring them in for joint work. Uh, but you know, I, what I learned at the broker dealer, it was independent, um, registered representatives across the country. Uh, and it's a lonely business when you're an independent, you're on your own, you've got your own shingle, you're building your own business, you're on your own to figure out how to get education. Obviously you work with a great uh, IMO like you guys that are providing opportunities for education like this. Uh, but we're not, you know, that's really on you to go and find some conferences and some events to attend to. And so we think that's really important as well as to provide those opportunities. Yeah. Uh, and so that's why we, one, we, we did best practice sharing. So we had six producers on stage sharing best practice. And that ranged from the traditional insurance producer all the way up to the, the fee-based RIA who's charging a flat fee for financial planning and does laddered fixed indexed annuities for income. So, so cover the gamut uh, of different types of business models. Uh, but cumulatively, those six producers had done uh, close to $700 million in premium with American equity. So just to give you an idea of the, how successful these guys are, and that's, you know, they, they obviously don't do all the business with us. They're not captive. Sure, sure. That's just with us. So these are some really successful shops that you get to sit down and rub elbows with. And even one of them got on the stage and said that the number one thing that he gets is sitting down and having a cocktail with the other top producers and he even shared one of the ideas he had picked up, uh, one of the other agents. So I'll share this as a, as a best practice. Uh, his office does a video recording birthday greeting. So yeah. the whole office does a little quick video, happy birthday, you know, and, and they send that out as their birthday greeting. And he's like, I love that. I'm going to in implement that in my business. So his, the worth of the trip for him is to pick up that one great nugget from one of his colleagues. And then we had some great um, third party speakers come in. So I share this because, you know, you know, make sure you're aware that this is available. It's part of our loyalty rewards program. Our next meeting is going to be the first week of April in uh, Nashville. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that. And, you know, if you're not sure about how to qualify, reach out to your IMO, reach out to Aaron and they can walk you through it. So that's, yeah. that's the foundation. And then we, we use, you know, the shield, uh, brand is designed to shield a portion of your client's assets from retirement unknowns. So we're starting to build out this whole concept of these retirement unknowns. And it's based on some academic research. You know, we talk a lot about things like sequence of returns risk and longevity risk and all these things that, you know, if, if your clients are just taking a systematic withdrawal to their portfolio, they're, you know, you, you run the chance that you're going to run out of money. If you go in front of a group of RIAs who've been in the business for like 20, 25 years, and you, you talk about those things and then you say, okay, so how many of your clients are running out of money? They'd be like, none, no one's running out of money. And the, the academic research would support that too. Okay, well, wait a minute. You know, we, we protect people from running out of money. Well, no one's running out of money. Okay, so <laughs> what do we do? Uh, the, the new generation of literature that's really digging into it is finding out that what people are doing is they're not spending their money. Uh, right. Which, you know, if you're an AUM advisor, that's awesome. Um, you know, charging a, a percent on AUM on an asset that never actually gets spent down. Right, right. Um, you know, unlike the Monte Carlo you ran for the client, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, you know, it's, they're never going to spend it down. And you think about it, you, all of us on this call, everybody listening to this, we've been trained to accumulate. Uh, we've spent 30, 40 years accumulating. God, I still remember opening my first passbook, passbook savings account <laughs> at the local bank in rural Minnesota uh, with my paper route money. I remember how excited I was when I could you know, go in there and get a stamp when I take my, uh, my paper out money checks down there. Uh, and it's the same thing when I open my 401k statement, right? They call it a wealth effect. When the markets are up and everyone's feeling good about their 401k statements, you spend more money. Uh, even not, like even us, like as we're in the accumulation phase, just seeing the money on our statement go up. Now all of a sudden you get into retirement and you got to flip the switch and go from, you know, 30, 40 years of being trained to accumulate and now spend that nest egg down that you're so emotionally invested to you sacrifice to build and that's yeah. what I, and, the, and the research shows that you don't do that yeah, good so idea. then again how, how do you help people spend their money with confidence well you have to eliminate all these unknown obstacles that are sitting in the back of their heads Powerful. uh that they that they they 
they know they don't know about, right? It's these people, no unknown unknowns that are sitting out there. living paycheck to paycheck with, you know, $400,000 in a savings account because they're too afraid to spend it because of the what if, right? You know, my grandmother yep. is going through that right now. I mean, she's the most cautious ever with yeah. millions in the bank. Yeah. Just sitting there and my father's pulling his hair out. Going to Dunkin' instead of she's, Starbucks. He's flying up. Right. He's flying up to Delaware to, to cut her like bushes down. That's, the kind <laughs> that's, of, that's, that's is, what I'm man. talking about, right? Yeah. Uh, but that, isn't that exactly what he's yeah. talking about? Yep. Million, millions in the bank sitting there doing nothing with it yep. because of the fear of the unknowns. Spending a thousand dollars to pay somebody to trim hedge for you. You yeah. know? Crazy. No, that's, that's, and that happens all over the country every single day. And, you know, again, if, if I'm an AUM fee advisor, for some reason, these guys seem to be, you know, the, the investment only. And I got nothing against, I'm, I'm an investor, right? I love, I love hybrid practices. I think that's the best when you've got mm -hmm. your managing money and you're using insurance products to help spend the money. I think that's the, that, that, you know, if I were to get back into practice myself, that's the model that I would run. Um, but you're, you need to think about, you know, the annuities that, that we manufacture, not necessarily as, as an insurance vehicle, but as a tool to help people actually spend their money. Sure. Right. And, and then, you know, if, Hey, if, if you got too much money coming in on a monthly basis, because you've got my annuity, uh, maybe pension, social security benefits. Great. I will sit down and coach you on how to spend it. <laughs> you know, cause like, like you mentioned, I'm going through this with my parents right now. Uh, uh mom's 79, dad's 87 sure. and they got RMDs. They, they don't want, they don't need them. And I yeah. keep telling mom, I'm like, mom, you do something cool with the grandkids, you know, uh, Some take them out to lunch someday. <laughs> yeah, just, right. just you they, they'll spend some money on them, uh, but you'd rather just give us a check for, you know, 529 plan. To, you know, mm -hmm. it's like people actually need coaching on how to spend their money. And I sure. think, you know, having the annuity and that's, that's my mom annuitized a bunch of her portfolio. And now, you know, they've gone through the go, go years where they were spending a lot. Yeah. Right. And, and they've, they've moved into the slow go years. They don't really want to travel. They've done that already. You know, uh, they don't like to drive at evening. They still go out to dinner, but they don't each get an entree. They split an entree. Dad right. still golfs. He doesn't play 18 anymore. He plays nine, then goes home and takes a three hour nap. <laughs> um, so those are the slow go years. And then you're going to go to the no go years where it, it's even less. Yeah. Um, so you need to have that spending power right at the beginning of retirement. That's why I'm a big fan of maximum guaranteed income right at the beginning of retirement. Spend it. That's right. And you know what? If you get to the, the slow go years and you got too much income coming in, Great. Let's let's brainstorm some ways to use that to enrich your life and to do the things that are most important to you in your life. Yeah. And that, that's I think we can transform advisors and agents from kind of just, you know, doing this traditional planning where it's it's, you know, how are we going to take the money out to really thinking about how am I going to help my clients leave, live a better life? Yep. Yeah. And I think a, a big part of that is is the annuity solutions that we provide is is giving them permission to spend the money and that's what we do you're bringing a whole lot of value yeah. to the client throughout the 20 30 year retirement yeah you know? that, that yeah. that's that's something i think advisors struggle with too yeah. they, it's they like find, we, we look at like the potential for quality of life right like you're yeah. trying to put the paper together like the money create the, the math to say like hey well they've got extra money so if they want to live a good life they can yeah versus like you're saying helping them to actually distribute those funds right. and say look take the trip to disney go do this go do that right that comes to having a relationship with your clients. But you see, you see so many advisors struggling with, and we get the call all the time. They're looking for a way to eke out some more referrals, or I'm mm -hmm. not getting enough referrals, or I can't find a way to stay in my client's life after I put the plan together. I'm yeah. only dealing with it when the market's starting to tumble and they yeah. want to make a request just on the security side of the business. But they, 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 for the advisor that's looking for a way to stay in the life, it's like having these conversations in the beginning in the planning phase that, hey, look, I'm going to be here to help you if we have troubles spending the cash or whatever. I'm going to be your coach yeah. for the next 20, 30 years. Yeah. Financial and life coach. Yeah. yeah. Cre create an annual review template. Uh, so, so think about the annual review process. What, what is the traditional, you know, the, the, the traditional agent advisor, you sit down, you review the performance, you know, we do an 11 month statement on our fixed index annuity. So you can get an idea of where your credit is going to land. Do we re want to reallocate this? Hey, how's everything else going? Do you have any other money out there you'd like to add to your annuity? Right. Right. Uh, here's what your investments did this year. You know, do you have any questions? Um, instead of, of, you know, thinking about your annual view is more of a return on life type of annual review. Like what are the, what are the categories that make people happy? Um, God, there was just an article on think advisor. I got to, I want to post this on a uh, social media here. It's on my to-do list. I just haven't done it, but it was uh, a talk. I think it was Michael Finca from the American college and maybe even David Blanchett. 
Um, but they were talking about the the research Michael's been doing um, on retirement satisfaction. There's this huge government study, the Health and Human Services study, or Health yeah. and Retirement study, I forget what it's called, but it's a it's a longitudinal study where they follow cohort cohorts of people from like 55 all the way through retirement, and they survey them and they get all this data. And he's been able to glean some really interesting things about um, satisfaction in, in retirement and in, in social connections. Right, money actually does have a has, have a part in that. Sure, uh, but he's got some interesting findings on on income versus portfolio value. We're we're working on a white paper with him right now, so more to come on that. Cool. But um, you, an advisor or an agent who wants to can come up with an annual review template that's more about you. What are you doing to uh, you know focus on your social engagement? What are your activities outside the home? What kind of community involvement are you doing? Um, what are some new things that you've never done before you want to try? Okay. So your task for 2022 is to try those three things, right? And next year on a review, we're going to sit down and and think about how did you do, you know, if I'm an advisor, again, I got a relationship with a great travel agent and I'm, I'm brainstorming with my clients. Like you have this amazing opportunity with the grandkids, right? You said that that's the most important thing to you as family. Okay. what What are we doing? Right. I love that. We've talked about that exact thing on the show, having a travel agent as one of your references. We all have an estate planning attorney. We've all got our CPA that we work with, yeah. or if you, you know, you're established should. in the business, yeah. you should have those things. But the third, uh, the, what a great third to have yeah. like a travel agent or, you know, obviously you got like med sup guys and mm-hmm. things like that if you're not doing that personally. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's important. I mean, what a great thing to be able to offer, uh, an opportunity to, for them. If, the, if it, they do say, I want to travel or I want to spend time with yeah. grandkids kids or I want to do something like that. Like put that money to use. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I mean, that's, that's always like a, I want to pay less in taxes. I want to make sure you take care of my family and I want to travel more in retirement. Right. Like those are always three things that are always tied together in any Jeez. kind of fact finding. Right. So always. to be able to answer two of them and every other advisor is like, ah, eh, they'll figure out the traveling by themselves. Right. So Powerful, yeah. powerful. Aaron, anything to add to uh, the sweet or the shield suite at all? You know, I guess I just just more from a from an overarching kind of uh, back to that resurgence we talked about, right? Sure. And I think you can go all the way back to about a year ago when when we made some updates to Income Shield. And Matt, you can slap my hand here if I'm going too far down the bunny trail, right? <laughs> Um, but really that's kind of where it started. Um, we made some changes there to get that competitive again, that product competitive again from a payout, uh, factor percentage. And lo and behold, um, I think we've had five straight quarters now up through second quarter where, uh, income shield 10 has been, you know, the number one selling guaranteed 10 year income product in the independent agent channel. Powerful. Yeah. The changes Um, worked, you know, and, and, and there's a, a, some great stories we've been telling out on the road and, and we've been holding tons of lunch and learn. So if you got, for those in the field, when you see that email come across, whether it's from me or one of my regional friends, you know, come on down to that, that uh, Ruth's Chris or that Capital Grill and, you, you know, come have lunch with us. We'll break some bread and, and we'll, we'll talk through, you know, what's going on yeah. with the product like income shield, why it's so exciting right now and ways that you can help just to Matt's point, position a product like that to help that person guarantee that income or retirement. Because we know, I mean, there's been, uh, I've been reading some recent studies. One was the independent, um, the IALC, um, and then we've got the insured retirement Institute that basically had the same numbers come back. It was like 86, 87% of folks believe having income from savings in retirement is important. Yeah. So they may not understand what that FIA can do for them. Cause they're not really sure about what that may be, Right. but they know they want guaranteed income generating in retirement off those assets or that savings they spent 30, 40 years building. Mm-hmm. And, you know, let's have a conversation of how we can help you position that product like an income shield yeah. to, to go do that and help that client so they can go take that cruise with the grandkids, uh, the Disney cruise they've always dreamed of or whatever it may be. Um, you know, I think that's that's what's been exciting and, and re-engaging with some of these updates we've made. And of course, you know, we've made updates to Asset Shield and the new Estate Shield product and I imagine we'll continue to to be pushing the needle with products and making sure we're being good and competitive. But 
you know, I, I think relaying those stories, just like Matt was laying out and what you guys do on an everyday basis for your advisors yeah. of helping lay out the story of here's why it's so important. Yeah. Um, I just think that can't be overstated enough. American equity puts a, a great presentation, makes it easy to present to, yeah. to a product, uh, to a client. I can tell you that much. And it is the number one concern that we get from all of our, I mean, we here at Megastar offer all kinds of different marketing opportunities for advisors to get in front of new prospects. Mm-hmm. And, and, and in most of those cases, we get feedback from the prospective client uh, on their concerns prior to them either coming to the workshop that we've set up or coming to an appointment that they've pre-requested, something like that. And the number one concern almost always is, will I have enough income in retirement or I want guaranteed income or, you know, that's mm-hmm. my concern. And it's never about, you know, how much money can I cling on to from for 20, 30 years, right? Yeah. That's never the story or, or very rarely the closest thing to that would be, you know, I want to make sure that I pass on this wealth to my, my next of kin. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to make sure it passes through as tax efficiently as possible. Yep. That's a common one. But the most common is always like, I want to make sure that I can spend this income in retirement. Right. And so it's like American equity has presented, you know, in my opinion, a very easy conversation to have with somebody about if this is your main goal, here's an American company that has been one of the best in customer service has set the absolute standard from that perspective Mm -hmm. and has one of the most competitive products on the, on the market to either do whatever you're looking for, guaranteed income. If you're looking for accumulation, if you're looking for estate planning, that's why I use them is because of that. These, these reasons I just laid out to you. Right. And, and, and that's where I feel American equities back. And when we've talked in the beginning of this conversation about the, the producer summit, I mean, as we've continued to con- converse about this, the feeling doesn't just stop at, uh, you know, the consumer level, right? The retail level, we'll call mm-hmm. it. it. It, from, from a wholesale level, you guys bring everybody back together at these summits for everybody to be around and teach, train, coach, and motivate the things that we try to accomplish on this show, or I'm sure other IMOs out there try to do the same for their folks, but very few carriers allow or afford the opportunity to the entire industry that's involved with them to come together and teach each other about what's going on in the field, what successes they're having and everything. And, And that layered on top of all the other good with American equity is why they've been a top carrier for us and for so many producers out there for so long. Yeah. And I could not be more proud to have you guys back uh, at the helm. Honestly, very excited. Uh, I know Rick is too. Absolutely. Yeah, it makes well, my life we, a lot easier. Right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I can just do, do more business with you guys, get good customer service and not sit on hold dealing with other people. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. You know? But I, you know, from my perspective too, internally, we're just scratching the surface. So, I mean, you, you turn the ship right and now we're really starting to figure out our stride, yeah. right? So you're going to hear a lot more from us. You know, there, there'll be new products, enhancements, all kinds of stuff. So lots of things in the works. But I, I'm excited to be here, and and I'm excited on just all those things that you guys talked about. And you know, just to just to reiterate the breadth of solutions. You know, whether it's you know accumulation, different surrender charge periods. Uh, we know we're in a low interest rate environment, and people are looking for more upside opportunity. So if they're willing to contribute a little bit of their capital, um, we can give them a little bit more upside opportunity. Something like the performance rate rider. Yep. You know, please check out our website for all the details. Um, uh, we've got our, our brochures, a lot of material right online. You don't even have to do a, a, a password. We've got links to all of our index providers right on. Uh, AmericanEquity.com, so it, it's very easy to get access to. Uh, you've got income now. You've got income later um, for clients who don't like fees. Um, you know, we hear Tom Hegna and his webinars talk about fees. I don't like fees. Well, we got both riders with fees, or we got riders without fees. Yeah. And, you know, what do you want? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I got everything. Um, you need increasing income. We got that. You you want some legacy opportunities for a beneficiary? We got opportunities there. So the the product breadth and the solutions that we solve uh, are getting broader. So you can use American equity in more places than you ever have been able to before. And I think we're going to continue to add to those solutions and looking at more opportunities uh, in the future. Well, it's uh, it's absolutely powerful stuff. Again, like we said, very, very happy to have you guys back, uh, back as a powerhouse in the industry. Uh, I want to thank you guys for both being on the show today, Aaron, Matt, I appreciate the time. Um, you know, 
if you are an advisor out there and I've gotten the emails uh, a few times now, uh, if they are doing a lunch and learn in your area, you absolutely should take a minute or two or, or an afternoon, evening, whatever, to go hang out with them and learn about what's going on with these products. And we don't want to get too into the weeds on the show here about the particulars of each product. But if you go to those lunch and learns, it's a terrific opportunity for you to engage with your regional reps, uh, to get to understand the products, to uh, just understand what makes American Equity great yeah. if you're not familiar or re-engage with a company that that you once loved. Um, uh, other than that, the trips, uh, I know you guys said mentioned Nashville. Um, uh, there's other information out there on how to qualify for their other trips as well. We've got that here. You can call Rick, you can talk to anybody, or your rep anywhere. Um, but guys, yeah, and, yeah, let me, do, do you guys have our regional sales map, but at least we can make sure that your agents all have access to sure. it. You know, we've got nine regionals across the country, yep. but not always a lunch and learns, but if, if you like the face-to-face -face meeting, the relationship building opportunity, we've got local feet on the street to meet with you in person. Uh, if you're a virtual person, great. We can meet with you virtually, uh, or we've got the lunch and learn. So we'll meet you wherever you want to meet. If you're, if you're an agent, uh, a financial professional out there, you're interested in learning more about American equity, by all means, uh, get, get our regional map and contact our sales team and set up an opportunity to engage uh, personally. Yeah, powerful. You know, I'll throw out one more thing too, Alex and Rick, yeah. is, you know, we're all being pretty active now, uh, you know, with LinkedIn. Uh, so if you want to connect with me, I can get you in connection with your, your regional. If it's not myself, uh, but feel free, you know, get connected on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm trying to post a lot of great <laughs> articles and studies that I'm coming across um, just to help, you know, my my partners that are out there in the field. So I, sure. I, I love that opportunity to even interact that way if that works well for folks, too. We'll make sure to link everything in the promotion of this episode. So if you uh, want to track back to the email that brought you here or the social post, all of these links will be posted there as well as on the YouTube page itself. Uh, Rick, anything to add here? No, I'm good, man. Awesome. All right, guys. I hope to have you guys back on the show to talk maybe a little more on sales concepts and everything. After all, we are Coffee for Closers, yeah. right? We want to talk about sales stuff and how to approach those types of things. But we appreciate you guys being on the show. We appreciate everybody else watching and listening in for tuning in once again. And we'll see everybody right here next time on Coffee for Closers. Thanks. Hey, hey.